Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So what if I told you that there is a Vortex shotgun that has an internal magazine, is side loading, holds up to 10 shots, and is lever action with a stock attachment point that's the size of a pistol, and it's one of the most underrated blasters in Nerf history. Would you believe me if I told you that? Well, you probably know exactly which one it is and don't realize it. The Vortex Diatron is way better than everybody says it is. And today, I'm going to explain to you why I think that is. So the Vortex Diatron came out in 2013 and was received to literally no appreciation at all. The blaster to this day is the most disliked Vortex blaster and I cannot understand why because this thing has so much personality to it, I don't even know where to start. Actually, I do know where to start. The design. I don't know what the Hasbro designers were on when they made this thing, but uh, what in the crap is going on? with a Vortex Diatron. Look at this, it's a box. It is super wide and it's super stubby and tall. It is flat on the front, it's flat on the bottom, it's flat on the top, it's flat on the back. It's flatter than Hasbro's family tree. This blaster is completely just weird shaped. And at the same time, it looks fantastic. It looks so good. Look at all this greebling and details put into it. Like, it looks like some kind of, like, double laser disc shooting shotgun thing. It looks like what it's trying to be. Like, this looks like it should be some kind of laser shotgun of sorts. Like, although it seems like one should be shooting out of the top and one out of the bottom, but I digress. That's just how the blaster's mechanism works. And there's really no way that it could have worked like that to begin with. So I'll give them a pass there. But this blaster looks fantastic. And the way that Vortex blasters are designed with all of this reflective paneling built in, it just looks so good. It has that same circuit board style feel that the Nitron has and the Praxis has and all the other Vortex blasters that I've seen. I love the design of the Diatron, even though there is one tiny drawback. They didn't paint the logos on the other side, but they did paint all of the individual details, so I'll give them a pass. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster consists of a main grip and a side prime, though it also also has a stock attachment point, which is just awesome. I just love the fact that this has a stock attachment point because being able to put a stock on something like this just feels right. Like it's so short that a stock looks goofy on it, but it just works. Like, thank you Hasbro. Thank you for giving us a stock attachment point on this blaster that really doesn't need one. But let's actually talk about the main grip. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's fantastic. It's just as good as a Nitron's grip, if not even better, because this grip is simultaneously super nice and filleted, but also has quite a bit of volume to it. It's a little bit thicker at the bottom than it is from the top, and it's just a perfect handhold. Combine that with the finger troil and just the overall smoothness of the grip and the way that it's just the perfect shape and the perfect size. I love the way the Diatron feels to hold. It feels so good. I have no complaints with the grip whatsoever. Now, a bit of a word of warning, it does have a grip guard. So if you are if you have too big of hands, you might have an issue with the grip guard. But even if I crunch my three fingers together, I can easily fit a fourth finger in there. I can hold it like this, and only then do my fingers actually come in contact with the grip guard. So unless you have monstrously huge hands, I don't think it's going to be an issue for you. Now onto the side prime. This is the part of the blaster that gets the most backlash because of the way that it works. This is the side prime. It, it's, it's really tight and it doesn't have that good of a handhold on it, but there are so many different ways to prime the blaster that I can give it a pass even there. And speaking of which, let's talk about how this blaster works and elaborate on this priming handle a little bit more. This is an internal magazine fed shotgun. So you have this small lever on both sides that you can pull with your thumb. And once you do that, the side of the blaster will pop open. This only happens on the left hand side. So if you do it on the right, it'll still open the left hand side. After this, you can load up to 10 discs in and you have to load in at least two in order to get the blaster to fire. And you close this up. To prime this blaster, you take this lever and you pull it out to the left and then you smack it back into the side of the blaster and then you can fire once and it shoots two discs. So it is literally a Vortex shotgun. And I wanna talk about the way that this prime works because I kinda of have a controversial opinion that isn't really agreed with on the entire Nerf community. 
I love the way that this thing primes. It is unique and it works phenomenally well. You can prime this blaster by just pulling it out. You can prime it by doing this and priming it one-handed. You can prime it in so many different ways. There's literally no limit to how you can prime this blaster. If you can think of a way to prime it, it'll probably work. And that is kind of genius. This blaster is very unique in the aspect that it has a lever action that's built onto the side, which provides several different ways of using it, including the ability to one-hand this blaster in a non-traditional way. You could also prime it up off of a belt by like hooking it on a belt loop and then pulling it up and then pushing it down against your body and then being able to fire it like that. But it's honestly, that's just one of the many ways that you could operate this blaster. It is a priming mechanism that's not nearly as conventional as something like a top prime or a pump action, but it is very cool and I really like it nonetheless. With all that said, the trigger pull is pretty snappy just like the other Vortex blasters and now I can show you it firing. So the Diatron, do I think that this blaster is as bad as everybody says it is and really deserves its spot as the worst Vortex blaster? I don't know what the hell these people are talking about. This thing rocks. Maybe when it comes to like all the Vortex blasters, then maybe, yeah, this thing might be the worst, but honestly, as a blaster, this thing is fantastic. I love the Diatron. It is doing so many new things and doing them well. I've heard people talk about jamming issues, but throughout my testing of this blaster, I never got it to jam once, unless, of course, I did this. You see, the bottom of the magwell can actually clip down like that so that you can load in all 10 discs, but it constantly gets stuck and you gotta give it a big slam to get it out of that position. And it never really feeds well. It like constantly gets stuck to itself and it's really weird. I don't know why it happens, but when it does, it is super annoying and it's really fiddly and I just wouldn't recommend doing that at all. But honestly, it doesn't take away from my opinion of the blaster. This thing is good. And if you see one on sale somewhere or you just want to pick it up, I highly recommend taking a look at it. I believe you can find this blaster on Blaster Barn. If not, go to eBay. With all that said, thank you for watching. Bye.